Under what extraordinary circumstances could each of us here achieve our greatest potential as a manager, as a leader here at Dollar General? But what we found from 30 years of research is the real holy grail is to learn how to help each of the people that work so hard for us to achieve their greatest potential. When we help them elevate their game, when we help them win, what happens to us? We win. Mark Thompson is the CEO and co-founder of the Virgin Unite Entrepreneur Initiative. He is one of the most successful senior business communication executives and angel investors of our time. Mark Thompson has been a board member and advisor to Fortune 500 and Global 100 companies. He was a member of the board of directors and audit committee of Best Buy Enterprises, a New York Times best-selling business author. Thompson co-authored the international bestseller, Success Built to Last, the sequel to Jim Collins and Jerry Porras' Built to Last, and co-authored with Brian Tracy, Now Build a Great Business. He is Charles Schwab's former Chief Customer Experience Officer, Chief Communications Officer, and Chief of Staff, reporting directly to the founder, Charles Chuck Schwab himself, starting in 1987. During his tenure, the company's customer assets grew tenfold to more than $800 billion in over 5 million client accounts. What we're going to talk about today is not just success, but a success that lasts for the long term. And not just success that's organizational. It's not just the whole abyss of a company. Leadership is more personal than ever. It has more than ever to do with each and every one of you being able to recruit people to your idea of this dream your idea of what you want to execute here. They have to be able to be willing to take the leap of faith and take a bet on you, take a risk that they can make a difference and have impact under your leadership. 30 years of research and interviews with hundreds of successful leaders around the globe, Thompson helps transform both businesses and individuals alike to boost sales and lead change. We were concerned about this speaker because um, we have a very tough, very intelligent crowd. And for them to feel like they really spent their time well listening to you and interacting with you was a very tough bar. Mark Thompson just spoke to us about a lot of the macro trends that matter to all of us. And one of the things I'm going to do as an action item right out of this is go back to my co company where we have a thousand customer event every year and invite Mark to come to that event. It's perfect for setting the context, stepping back from the day-to-day -day operational craziness that we all deal with, and really look at how you build the business, build the idea of trust, build it throughout your organization. Trusting your employees, trusting your customers, trusting yourself. What's interesting about your industry is nobody's safe yet. There's nobody who has it locked up. Everybody has something that's vulnerable. Everybody has an area that they need to work on. And that provides a great opportunity. What was amazing, in 27 industries, each organization, after having doubled once and doubled again, set on a path to yet again double. When I saw this, I kind of wondered, is it really necessary to continue to push like that? What's wrong with being stable for a while? Just absorbing this and digesting all of this. And what I learned from the evidence is, ends up being kind of dangerous thinking. Because what we saw was that organizations out of the 10,000 that decided to be stable without setting those stretch goals, in three years, they were lower on the scale in the top 10. Within five years, they were struggling to be in the top 10. And in 20 years, they were gone. You grow or die. It is about growing. And it's not because of our own ego. It's not just because of our own ambitions. It's because our customers are facing the same circumstances. They want to grow. And there's competitors, if it's an attractive business with increasing margins like yours, there's always competitors that are waiting to throw resources and capital at it. Before every keynote presentation, Thompson and his team will reach out to interview your customers and managers to make sure the keynote is right on target. Video excerpts from the interviews are incorporated, creating a one-of-a-kind presentation. Overall, the presentation was so entertaining and educational because of the way the video clip was incorporated into the presentation style. I think the audience really enjoyed it. I really admire the way you simplified the concepts and made them digestible and understandable and relate, people could relate to them. So that was very good. I really, really liked that. So as I was telling you, we have our next executive exchange in Florida in May and uh, Angela could give you the 
dates and we'd love to have you there. How many of you would like to see your team be able to be so effective you can manage through these next five years of change with great success? How many of you feel that conviction? It's good to see this because this is at the core of the research we've been doing at Stanford for the last 30 years. What we've been doing is looking at 17 industries that have gone through extraordinary and excruciating change. We looked at organizations, only those that had been successful for 20 years or more. We wanted measurable, demonstrable success. And the good news is that we found, when we did the global survey, that there were five principles that were necessary to manage change during turbulent periods like this in all of the industries. We're gonna talk about those five. Whether you're Mother Teresa or Beverly Wallace, or whether you're Nelson Mandela or Ralph Lawson, you've applied five fundamental principles. What do you think the first principle is? Defining reality. A very simple process of being brutally clear about the reality and the uncertainties that we're facing. And looking at our survey of 10,000 organizations, only about 500 really completely came clean in sharing with all stakeholders what does it mean to face reality? Have we really done that with our stakeholders? Because only then are we in a real position to define that landscape and redefine it for the future. Gallup did a study of 750,000 employees and, and looked at 36 different elements that really drove behavior and kept people engaged in your business and kept them engaged in learning and loyal to the, the cause of the company. You know what the overwhelming leading factor that was motivating individuals to continue to stay and work for an organization was the relationship with their boss. One of the things that we all have to remember whether we like it or not, in our jobs, all of us here are mentors. People look at us under a magnifying glass. They're watching our behavior. They're looking for exceptions to what we say and what we do. And what we can really do best in managing change and in recruiting people to that change is to think of ourselves as mentors and fight for each other rather than against each other. Helping the people who work for us be better than we ever were when we held that job based on our experience and our time. Three simple but difficult to execute principles that came up over and over in hundreds and hundreds of interviews that we did. But there were the three principles that he learned that we tested in our research that apply always in building trust around your store and your district and your brand. These three principles, we call them the three R's. And the first R is responsibility. Very simple, but often difficult to do. Silence is not golden. Nobody ever expects something good to come out of a period of silence. People want to know that you are going to be responsible even if you don't have all the facts yet. In fact, they'd rather have you be responsive than necessarily have the problem solved right away. Every dictionary that we found in any language, and if you can find a place that it's different, say goals, money, fame, and power. And we wonder why our employees and our kids and others get confused about what success really means. Because the real definition of success is what I heard in the room just now. The definitions you just gave me now are the three that we heard all over the world among people who had been successful for 20 years or more. Forbes magazine named Thompson one of the top 100 venture investors with the Midas touch. And he's currently an investor in companies like Facebook and Apple Computer's number one app provider for the iPhone and iPad. Mark is program chairman of the American Express Peter Drucker Leadership Video Series. ABC News calls Mark Thompson the Napoleon Hill of the 21st century. Tony Robbins says Thompson will inspire you to greater business results with your heart and your head. Visa International says Mark Thompson's keynote solves business problems and hits the bullseye for your organization. Sir Richard Branson says, success built to last reveals a meaningful secret formula for success. 